Any event Italians go, they try and figure it out. They go to a wedding. The whole ride home. How much you think they paid for the... <laughs> we itemize everything we saw at the wedding. Well, they wrapped the chairs. That's $38 a chair. <laughs> they had a sweet table, ice sculptures. I got the vaccine. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't get it to save my life. I really didn't. I didn't get it to save your life. <laughs> I got this thing, same reason why a lot of Italians went to go get it. As soon as the Italian community found out if you get COVID, you lose your ability to taste food. <laughs> scared the shit out of us, right? I ran to get this thing. I got two, Moderna and Pfizer. I said, just pump me full of this. I don't care if I die from the vaccine. At least I'm gonna die with the taste of meatballs in my mouth, all right? Not going 15 months without tasting food. I'd rather be dead. I look to see what's going on in the room. If it's too, too, too many things, I start rearranging. I'll take a chair, I'll throw it in the elevator, and I'll send it to the lobby. <laughs> People get in the elevator, they think it's part of the hotel. They're like, wow, this is fabulous. <laughs> they have furniture in here? My feet are just killing me. My question to you guys. Do you recognize the two big women in this picture? <laughs> and it wasn't until we walked over to this photo that my buddy Armando and I realized something about ourselves. And that is that when two full grown fluffy men are going downhill at a 45 degree angle <laughs> with no shirts on going like this, I'm cool. But now they got the whole, you know. If you're fluffy, one of those is not gonna lock. You're trying. People are in line. You can do it! One time I took a trip with my buddy Mondo, right? Big guy, another big guy. And uh, I went with him because his family, you know, they decided to go and he didn't want to be the only one hanging out by the strollers. So we're hanging out, and at the end of the day, my buddy Mondo goes, dude, we should get on a ride. I go, which one? They all, we can't get on none of them, dude, we're too big. He goes, there's a ride here at Disneyland. It's called Splash Mountain. I go, makes it all the way to the front. He takes the gift basket, and he puts it on the stage. Now he's heckling me from where you're sitting. I'm standing here, and he's like, Fluffy! <laughs> What's up, dude? I got this for you. Thank you. Open it. I go, sir, we're kind of in the middle of a show right now. I says, I appreciate the gift. That's very nice of you. I says, but uh, how about this? I'll, I'll open it after the show. Oh, come on, Fluffy. I want to see your face. Um, sir, how about this? How about you take the gift basket and you bring it over here to the side of the stage where security's at, and I'll have security escort you behind the curtain, and then I'll open it up backstage with you in front of me. How's that? And he's not taking no for an answer. Now, the problem, what winds up happening is that story goes crazy on Comedy Central. People are giving them a hard time, so they pull it. Next thing you know, I upload it through YouTube. YouTube, 10 million views it gets on YouTube. Then they flag it because the word racist is on the title, so it gets pulled off. So then I re-upload it, it gets another 10 million, then I had people share it. All in all, the video's probably gotten about a little over 100 million views. So here's what happened. You can always tell the type of woman you have when you're about to get into a fight with another man. I think there's three types of women in the world, and they show who they are when you are about to get into a fight, okay? First type of woman does not get involved. You do not want to have your girlfriend get involved if you're about to get into a fight with a guy, right? First type of woman does not get involved. About to get into a fight with a guy, like, yeah, fuck you, motherfucker. She stays out of it. That was my last girlfriend. She's in the corner of the room crying. Good bitch, cry over there. <laughs> I got this. Second type of woman, you're about to get into a fight with a guy like, yeah, fuck you, motherfucker. Uh, usually this is like a Puerto Rican girl or a Dominican girl, right? Then in your peripheral, you see she's like cracking her neck and taking her earrings off. They're like, what is she doing? Why, why is she stretching? She's touching her toes. You know, what's happening? Then out of nowhere, she fucking jumps into frame and Superman punches the guy in the face. So now you and your girlfriend are fighting six guys in a Wendy's parking lot somewhere because you got a ride or die bitch. Third type of woman, uh, usually this is like uh, your wife or you've been with her for a We started calling white women Karen during the pandemic. I love calling white women Karen, watching them lose their fucking minds is the best. <laughs> Have you been called Karen before, miss? That would hurt though, right? 
It would. That's like the N-word for white women, right? <laughs> it's probably worse than the N-word, right? I, uh, I know that I'm getting older because of the way that all of my friends talk. Uh, I'm on a diet right now, and I was telling my buddy the other day what I do when I'm on a diet. And uh, he goes, yo, bro, your diet's so gay. He called my diet gay. Who calls a diet gay? That's crazy, right? This is what I do. If I'm eating a cheeseburger, I'll take the bun off the burger. Then I'll mush it in the shape of a cock, and I'll shove it up my ass. <laughs> I start fucking myself with the cheeseburger bun right at the table. He's like, holy shit, dude, that's really gay the way you're shoving that cheeseburger bun into your asshole. I'm like, okay, boomer, I guess I'm gay. That's her fault. That's a lesson to all the women in here. If you're being attacked in a big city like New York, be more specific about what's going on. That's what I say, right? She should have been like, someone help! I'm on the northeast corner! I'm 125th in Frederick Douglass in front of the fucking Popeyes. There's a homeless guy drawing a swastika and shit on the bus stop. Send help. Yeah, man, having a kid, it is, it is very difficult, you know? It's, it's really hard. I'll tell you my biggest fear for my son. Um, do you remember in, like, the ninth or the 10th grade, everyone started experimenting sexually? Everyone started getting, like, blowjobs and handjobs and shit, right? I had two friends of mine who were really nerdy, and they couldn't get any girls to hook up with them, so eventually they got so sexually frustrated that they just started sucking each other's dicks after school every day. Yeah, and these guys are not gay, by the way. I see them now on the holidays with their families. They give me that look, they're like, dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> And that's my biggest fear for my son. Not that he'd be gay, just that he'd be such a dork that he'd have to suck his best friend's dick after school every day. How much worse would that be? How terrible would that be? What would you do if you caught your son sucking his best friend's dick? I would do the same thing my mom did when she caught me smoking cigarettes. I would sit him down in his bed, and I would make him suck 20 dicks in front of me. I'd make him suck an entire pack of dicks right there and then. Unfiltered. Until he was sick, until he was green in the face, full of cum, just puking everywhere. Like, have you learned your lesson? Have you sucked enough cocks? All right, go play, you little knucklehead. And hey. Yes, stranger. So we get in the car, and she's promoting a couple. It's her couple. She's like, you're gonna love these two. She's an interior designer. He's a stay-at-home dad. Huh? I didn't grow up with the stay-at-home dad culture. I come from an immigrant Italian family. You, yeah. yeah. Italians don't do this. You rarely hear a woman go, no, Anthony's at home with the kids. <laughs> Hasn't worked in years. He just loves watching Peppa Pig and going to the zoo with the kids. There's another website, Airbnb. What is this? You're gonna rent out a room in your house to a stranger? Is it worth the $86 a night? Huh? Have some psychotic family show up at your porch. Hello, do you? I couldn't do this. I couldn't have strangers live with me while I'm there. I couldn't do it. If I did it after they left, I'd have to burn the room. <laughs> they lived it. I don't know what's falling out of people's ears into the tempur Burn the mattress. I don't do this. I don't stay with... Th that he has a... Uh an undeniable confidence about himself Thank you. that you yes. that you typically never see yes uh, you, you, you run across it you, you mentioned him and somebody else that had this type of yes. confidence I, who's I, the other guy not a guy it, it's uh amy um schumer thank you very much but it's like <laughs> I was going to say, Amy Schumer and you, you're the only, like, it's this thing. I try to tell other comics who talk about it, I go, Jay Moore had this thing and Amy Schumer had it where it's like, even before they were great, they were like, I'm great. It's like such a matter of fact that I'm going to be famous. May as well get to it right away. And it was so, it was just like this undeniable kind of Saturday Night Live. And I know in the book you say people always ask you about Saturday Night Live. It's, it's, and, and I'm fascinated with it too. I've never done the show and it, it seems like it's disorganized, and yeah. I'm trying to figure out 
when you were there, it just seemed like uh, you didn't know when to show up. They're, 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 they're telling you, you know, we're paying you for uh, to be here, right? And was it as chaotic as you describe in the book? Because I get anxiety thinking about the process there. Yeah, it's it's pretty disorganized, but once I was out, like now looking back, I'm like, oh, I could totally do it. Like, I get it. Like, there's a there's an order to the chaos. And I would I would ask, like, what time should I come in tomorrow? And they, if I didn't know the exact lines, I would just say a line, like, in the ballpark and right. just to keep it moving. Because you always felt like you belong there. You, you That's the confidence. Like, you felt like, I, I should be doing this part, so let's just put me in the bed now and see what you're going to get, because you're going to get it. It's, like, <laughs> fucking crazy. I'd be getting in the bed going, I'm so sorry. Hospital bed. So you're at yeah. the woman's house and you asked to do it. was at the director's it. house, Willard Carroll, and his house. It was like up around this neighborhood. And uh, he had like a guest house and he had the auditions in his guest house. So I was literally just sitting next to a bed in the guest house and they were all set up. And I just started reading and I was like, can I, because my scenes are in the bed. Right. So I was like, I had some balls on me though. Bro, so like you but got under like, the covers? Do you I, take I, your shoes off? What? I took everything off except my boxers. Oh, oh my no, God. No, that's fucking confidence. Dude, I don't even relate if it's you will. It's always nice when you do a comedy club <laughs> and there's like an ice machine right off to the side. There's a... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right, right. Yeah. And it's staff. It's not yeah. even someone doing a drink. It's like literally they're just, you know, blending it up, of course. What is, you know... What is with the check spot, too? And then it hit me. I'm, I was going to try and sneak a baptism into the bath. I figure if I went to the death floor and found a priest giving last rites, I'll ask him, do you want to come up to five and baptize the Jewish baby so my mother and father get off my back? Because that's going to f*** you up. There's no way around that. Hard for me to watch any of these, like the the Olympic sports. I just can't watch them because I think too many people are cheating. Like whole countries are cheating, and I don't think we say anything to them because we're scared of them. I China, I think they cheat like crazy people. Like those Chinese swimmers, it couldn't be more obvious. And our announcer is always so polite about it. Uh, Bill, do you think perhaps Wong Fu was using steroids? Oh uh, well, she swam home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She beat the world record by an hour and a half, Bob. <laughs> it's pretty freaky. <laughs> the only sport I absolutely refuse to watch. My wife gives me this apparatus. It's like a bullet you put in the nostril and there's a hose attached and you're at the other end. And I go, babe, what do you, you, want me to, you want me to suck the snot out of her nose and then swallow that? I'll do it if that's what this requires, but shouldn't we read the box or Google it? I, 